today we're going to talk about paper millionaires versus business millionaires and the truth about getting rich in america if this is your first time here this is glendon cameron your hustling godfather what we talk about here is starting businesses and getting our hustles on we're about making that cheese all right so let's get into it once i make this window a little smaller that that did not do it as you can see i am not home I'm out here doing some different stuff and make sure we get up in here okay cool we are where we need to be so we're going to talk about these paper millionaires and we're going to talk about business millionaires first of all most of the millionaires in america are paper millionaires what does paper millionaire mean that means on paper you got a million dollars whether that's your home equity um, money in your 401k money in your pension plan your life insurance plan all that stuff counts so conceivably if you have a house that's worth let's say a million dollars and you only owe 200k on it you have eight hundred thousand dollars worth of net worth then throw let's say your your portfolio is looking juicy let's say that's 500 so now you're at 1.3 and then let's say you have a nice juicy life insurance policy of a million bucks so now you're at 2.2 million dollars net worth on paper you can't spend that now i'm going to give you an illustration of someone who is not a millionaire not a millionaire we're going to go back to our boy farmer brown and farmer brown he got gangster with it right farmer brown has about 100 acres it was left to him by his granddad he has a house so his 100 acres is worth 500,000 and the house is worth like 2 and he has some cows he has a lot of cows farmer brown has a lot of cows and he takes those cows to market now all farmer brown stuff is paid off and he has a net worth of like 750k plus every year when he takes these cows to market he gets 300 400k farmer brown is actually wealthier than the 2.2 million dollar person on paper because farmer brown is getting several hundred thousand dollars a year in remuneration from his assets so part of the reason i'm having this conversation is a lot of people are going crazy over paper millionaires uh, i've seen people play this game on quorum uh, q u o r a dot com my house my 401k and all this stuff and i'm a millionaire if you were to follow the four mandates as outlined in disruptive mail and let's say you started today 2018 and we go 10 years into the future this 2028 and you've got a business that doesn't make a million dollars a year your business does 400k a year and everything your business is paid for and your profit because you got some juicy margins your profit is 250k your your house you were able to get that paid off your house is worth you know six hundred thousand. so you got that you get the 250k oh wait a minute the business the business typically will sell for two to five times it's a value so if you're making like four hundred and twenty-five thousand a year we'll go ahead and go three because you've got a subscription-based model you've got reoccurring customers so you can get three to four times that because you already whoever buys it's automatically going to go ahead and start making money so that business alone is worth 1.2 and it churns out 250k a year even though you're not the same as the paper millionaire with the 2.2 million you have more physical cash. You have more cash that you can do things with, like become even wealthier. Uh, we got a lot of people who are stuck on this paper millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. No, you want to generate some assets that make you some money, Playboy. This is what you want to do. Because once again, the, the term a uh, millionaire, and there was this guy, I'm not going to mention his name. He comes on us like, hey, the lifestyle of a millionaire, blah, 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 blah. 
what about the lifestyle of someone who consistently makes 200K a year and has no debt? What about that lifestyle? Because the thing is, you know, we've crunched the numbers. We've talked about the numbers. More than half the country doesn't make $28,000 per year. You move that number up to 60, that's um, 78% of the people knocked out the frame. So there's not a lot of people in this country with a lot of money. So when you start moving up to the ranks, because you get to 150K, you're in the 1% of income earners in the world, not just the United States, but in the world. You get to 200K, falling out of control. 300K, good Lord. 500K, woo! You can make it a lot of cheese. So this is one of the things that you should adjust your expectations to reality. So if you are out here, one of the hardworking men of disruptive male, and you're out there, uh, one of the hardworking people of every man's a millionaire, and you in five years get you a hustle that makes you, let's say, 25K a month. That's 300K a year. You can live anywhere you want to, even California and New York. So it's very interesting. What's up, King Nick? Venturous one, Excalibur. Hassan Shabazz, I appreciate that. What's up, Mentor Shelly? <laughs> Kenny Vaughn. I just recently learned my older white coworker sitting on meetings and only has the job to have a job. He has multiple side hustles. What kind of questions should I ask? Get a job. Learn everything you can from him. Don't ask questions. Watch and observe. Thank you, Night Insurance. What's up, Cool Breeze? <laughs> That's the hotel room player. So th this is just one of the things to think about when you're out there making money. I don't want you guys to feel bad because you're only making a thousand bucks a month. If you're consistently making a thousand bucks a month, it's 12 grand a year. That's almost half of what half of America makes that will make some significant economic impact in your life. But one of the things that I think that many people get caught up in is being a millionaire. You are better. And in the, the millionaire next door, it actually says it that most of the small business owners, most of the millionaires are small business owners. It says this in the book. Most of the millionaires in America are small business owners. Let's say you never make it to a millionaire status. Let's just say you work 40 years and your business only does 200K. And that's like the last 10 years. And when you started really rolling, you were only making 95. Once again, if you follow the principles that are outlined in a disruptive mail, your house paid off, car paid off, you send your kids to college if you wanted to. You don't have to make a million dollars a year to be wealthy, and you don't have to uh, be a millionaire to be wealthy as long as you have income producing assets. My book, Making Money with uh, Self Storage Unit Auctions, was an asset that made me money for three years. It was an asset. I woke up, there was money in my merchant account. Or there was money on Amazon account. I got it every month. That's what you, that's how you get wealthy, by having an asset that makes you money. Uh, many people out here want to start businesses. And I was having this conversation with someone, and I, even O'Shea brought it up. Most of the people who start businesses fail. Most of the people who have a notion to start a business with no experience, don't know the market, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, those folks fail. But if you start a business based upon your experience, and let's say you are a drywaller, you know, you put sheetrock on houses and you, you're one of the members and he's like, you know what, I'm going to run me on crew. So you know how to do drywall. You know what, what's needed. You know how much it costs. You run your crew. All of a sudden, your income is 10 times higher. 
typical, you see this all the time, that somebody who has experience in the business, their success rate is like 90%. And we don't talk about those people because we want to talk about folks who are chasing rainbows and unicorns and fantasies versus people taking what they know and making some money with that. Ricardo, Glendon, can you explain how my income can help my business? Um, go ahead below and get into the, the art of holding and get into the Game 105 link because you, you'll sign up immediately for Game 105 and we'll go into that because that, that is way too long. That's not something I can like answer in a few sentences. That, that's a process. Cool breeze. My goal is basically have enough passive income to live the life that I desire. If that is a mean they're cool, but if he does 10,000 a month more than enough money, sorry, broke dude from Birmingham. <laughs> you know, let's talk about that. That's a good point. If most of America made 10K a month, which is $120,000 a year, and had a good financial plan, most folks would be fine. You can take two to four trips a year. You can get you a nice house. You can get you some nice cars. You can decorate it. You can save up money. So absolutely. Uh, once again, we're going to stay on point. Uh, I see a lot of y'all are trying to ask the art of holding questions. If you want that information, go below and get into the art of holding. Now, uh, since I'm out of town, as you can see this week, that might probably won't be any live webinars. Just depends on how this evening goes, but there will be content added because I'm gonna. My goal is to wake up every morning early and do something. So that's what's going on. What's up, Mohav? The app upload after a divorce is settled. How long does it take them to release funds? If a judge gets you an order that you got to pay. ASAP. ASAP. That's that's when that needs to happen. All right, so these videos are going to be a little shorter as well. We're not going to go the full hour. Um, where are we with this right now? Cool, cool, cool. Oh, it hadn't started. I came out here early because I wanted to do some stuff. Got people to meet, things to do. And this is kind of amazing seeing how I'm on a hot spot, how clear this is compared to when I'm at home. I may need to reinvestigate my uh, AT&T. Uh, all the links are below. Well, you know what? Let me make sure before I, I say that. Aha, uh -huh, I did not do that. I'll go ahead and put it in the comments once I'm done. No, it, it, it's, um, I, I need to change that because uh, I did not put that in there. And someone told me about that, so that's my bad. But uh, I will have that in there because this is, like I said, this is going to be shorter because I've pretty much gotten out of all the points that I wanted to make. And... While I'm out here, these streams probably will be shorter. So with that, do me a solid. Go below. Get on the text notification list. Give me a second. I'm going to put the Art of Holding link. Now, what's the Art of Holding Game 105? This is... Uh... <laughs> that blew my mind. This is... Um... Game 105 is about becoming the man. And you... There's information on how to get chicks, but it's really going to become about how to be a man. And the art of holding is employing legal strategies so that you can protect yourself. So that's essentially what the art of holding is about. And good Lord, happy birthday, Superstar Customs, celebrating my birthday by sharing some of the spoils I've achieved from watching your content. Thank you. That was a $250 super chat. Appreciate you. Appreciate you greatly. 
So this is what happens here at Hustlers Undergrad. All right. Um, so I, I got to go do some. So I will check you guys out. But before I leave, I will go ahead and put that link below. So with that, get on the text notification list. And if you're ready to enhance your game and illegally protect yourself now and in the future, be sure to get the Art of Holding and Game 105 bundle. So with that, I'll see you guys later.